Alongside Shrikar Rajendran, I'm Ravi Kapoor after Game 3 of the NBA Finals, and it does look like the Celtics are on their way to an 18th championship as a franchise. They win Game 3 on the road in Dallas, 106-99. The Mavericks made a big run in the fourth quarter but couldn't stave off uh, a tremendous game from Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, uh, and the Celtics are just a well-oiled machine, Shrikar. Ravi, I think it's time we wave the white flag, we throw in the towels, because this game, in this series, you know, it's, it's over. Um, what I will give Dallas, though, they've given the Celtics a bigger and bigger challenge with each passing game. So if the Mavericks came out in game four and just straight up, you know, won the game, and I wouldn't say in, in dominating fashion, but they came out and showed a lot more life, uh, just as they did uh, in that, you know, 21-point stretch at the end of the game. Then, you know, maybe you're in business, but it's Previous history does not favor the Mavericks at all. No team has ever come back 3-0 to win the finals, and I don't expect it to happen here. Yeah, Luka Doncic uh, you know, had, had a good game. So did Kyrie Irving. Kyrie had 20 at halftime. Uh, he ended up with 35. Luka had 27, but he fouled out with about four minutes to play on what many thought was a controversial call. I mean, honestly, Luka had a ticky-tack foul earlier in the game. Uh, that foul was uh, rightfully called. I mean, he's got to move his feet. Uh, and, of course, sometimes when you uh, cause the action like Jalen Brown did, he kind of triggered that whole circumstance of bang-bang play, uh, got Luka uh, in foul trouble, and ultimately had him fouled out. So, uh, And they did have a shot towards the end to actually uh, pull off the victory. But ultimately, you know, the Celtics just have so many weapons. They did this without Porzingis, which I think tells you a lot. Porzingis was there for that game one. Uh, with a tremendous output, but certainly he was hobbled in game two. Well, unlikely to play in game four uh, since they have uh, plenty of cushion. And uh, really, if you come down to it, uh, the big three of, of, of Tatum and Brown, and, and to me, I think uh, Drew Holiday is, is part of that, uh, that three-headed monster. Uh, Holiday just locked down defense, and uh, Tatum and Brown are showing why they are one of the best uh, duos in the NBA. Right. Well, you meant I, you might have mentioned it earlier. Tatum thirty one, Brown at thirty. You combined for sixty one points there. That is a true dynamic duo. Brown, I do think, is the more consistent player, and that's the player I do think that'll end up with Finals MVP. But Tatum, in his own right, obviously has an offensive arsenal. Uh, he's very elite in that in that regard as well. So he's a threat to go off any given game. He just hasn't shown that consistency throughout these playoffs, and led to some narratives about, hey, is he the guy that can get it done? I think he can. But, you know, I think Brown overall is kind of notched. Uh, not notched it, but at least in closer to winning that finals MVP. And you mentioned no Porzingis. I think Porzingis just elevates this team from amazing to insane. Like, that's really the difference here. Because even without Porzingis, they're 31-5. and five. So even without him on the floor, Porzingis does make a big impact, as we saw in Game 1 at that 11-point fourth quarter. But they don't really need him. It's more of, you know, the rich get rich in that sense. You know, Holiday, as you mentioned, he's been doing a great job with Kyrie Irving all series. Kyrie in this one did go off a little bit more. I think it's the result of going from Boston to Dallas, now in front of the home crowd. But again, Holiday doing his due part, this team get a chance to win. And we don't talk about Derek White at all, but he has been such a tremendous role player uh, and, and should get some kudos for the way he's just kind of balanced things, uh, you know, taking people off the dribble, hitting spot up threes. The guy's just a steady veteran. And you look at it, uh, you know, Drew Holiday just turned 35. Uh, it, you know, they've got veterans up and down. Even these young guys, the quote unquote young guys, Jalen and Tatum, I mean, these guys are vets. So this Celtic squad, you know, I'm sure they'll be able to keep it together. We can talk about it when they finally wrap up the series, because certainly I, I don't think anyone expects the Mavericks to come back. They look banged up, and they just look kind of outmanned. Uh, it, you, you can't do enough offensively uh, when you can't stop the Celtics. The Celtics are just getting wide-open looks uh, throughout. So we'll, we'll see if Friday night uh, it'll be wraps, uh, but uh, certainly in the next couple of games, this thing will be uh, likely all, all done. I just don't see the Mavericks uh, with, with enough uh, to come back. But uh, – Again, the Celtics had a heck of a regular season, so it's only fitting that after years of struggle and those of us that have been following the Celtics, you know, getting to the Eastern Conference Finals, losing to the in the NBA Finals to the Warriors a couple of years ago when they had a huge chance to win that series, 
uh, it does seem fitting that uh, after years of striving to this milestone, they're likely to get it. Right. And I think I've seen some questions being posed on social media on what this 2022 Warriors team would look like against this 2024 Celtics team. I'll tell you right now, I don't think they rip off three in a row. I mean, this team on paper is just absolutely as legit as it gets. You add Holiday and Perzingis in the mix, man, that's a tough team to deal with top to bottom and a great bench as well. Derek White, you mentioned Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser was out there making a couple threes. You know, this team is deep and, and this team really, I think when it's all said and done, people can say all they want. They ran through the playoffs and they looked absolutely dominant in each game. Well, we'll see if there's a coronation on Friday night in Dallas, uh, but the Celtics up three games to love on the Dallas Mavericks. We'll see you after game four.